All right. So this is E six five eight lecture twenty one. Is that right? So yesterday we were discussing uh, started our discussion on uh, flash LED converters. And the basic idea is quite straightforward, as we saw. Low, it will fall. 
So this is called the thermometer code. Alright. And uh, what you are after is not the thermometer code. You finally want a binary representation. You want a 3 bit binary representation of which bit the input lies in. Okay. So you want to take this thermometer code and you need to be able to convert it into a into a binary code. Alright, so you need to take this thermometer code and then need to uh, convert it into a you need to put a box here, convert it into a 3 bit binary code. I mean, there are only 8 bins in the input, so you need, uh, you will be able to represent uh, all the bins by a 3 bit binary. Okay. So, can somebody tell me what a straightforward way of uh, doing this? Uh, one thing to do is uh, recognizing that this is a transition. To do this, right? And uh, what happens? Etc. Right? So this set of, uh, I mean, so this, the numbers here, right? Will be what? Will be all zeros except at the transition. So. This is 1, this is 0, blah, blah, blah. This will be 0, blah, blah, blah. So, this code, right, this this is again another set of 2 to the n minus 1 numbers. So, this code, so this is the thermometer code, this is often called the 1 of n code. Strictly speaking, not 1 of n, but 1 of 2 to the n minus 1. Okay. Um, right? But the key point is that if everything was working properly, then you will get only 1 in these numbers will be, uh, will be 1, all the others will be quite straightforward. So, uh, from this to get the binary code is very straightforward, right? So you have, you know, you can use this as an address and then uh, just generate the the, the decoder. I mean, for a decoder, which will generate. Does it make sense? Okay. So the generic block, block diagram will be after the comparators will be the following, which is you have this this comparator array in general. So if you have The generic architecture of the flash, as we have seen. So, this will be the comparator array. Right? Once you have the comparator array, you push all these things into a box of combinational logic, which will generate this is the transition detect. The, tra the transition direct will, uh, so this code here so this is the thermometer code and this will give the uh, this will give the the transition director will give you the one of n code, alright. Then you put it through another logic block, which is basically generate your n bit binary code, and this is called the decode. Right? Now, this whole thing is called the digital backend. The digital backend simply consists of two layers of, in the simplest case, consists of two layers of 
combinational logic. The advantage of doing it this way is that it's a very regular structure. As you can see, okay, all that you need is, uh, I mean, uh, is a replication of identical units like this. So you have the basic comparator and you have, you know, some logic gates, and each slice is identical, and you can copy and paste, and the whole thing, you know, say you copy and paste 64 times, and you have a 6-bit flash number. You understand? An alternate thing to do is there any other idea you can think of which will uh, generate the binary code from the thermometer code? Another straightforward way of doing it is to simply add the number of ones in the thermometer code. Correct? So, can you comment on the complexity of that uh, when compared to uh, just doing this? Do you think that is more complicated or less complicated? Pardon? Yeah, that is definitely a more complicated affair than uh, simply uh, detecting the transition and uh, and going ahead with this one of n decoder, uh, I mean one of n code and then go to uh, one of n2 binary decoder. Alright? So, this is a way this is uh, the, uh, the uh, okay. Um, so, so this is a very very popular way of doing things. Okay, uh, especially at the six-bit level, for example, uh, uh, you know most six-bit converters, which uh, as I said yesterday, are um, a lot of flashes will all be six-bit flashes. Uh, all of them use this kind of architecture, right? We'll get into the details of the comparator soon, but uh, as far as the digital backend is concerned, this is a very uh, uh, commonly used argument. If you have, I mean, let's, uh, let's now couple of, uh, let's spend a couple of minutes and think about what problems you might encounter while adding. Okay, how do you add these numbers? Okay, one idea is have a serial adder. Okay, so uh, what is the problem with that? Pardon? I mean, if you do anything serially, it always takes more time, right? Because you are using the same piece of hardware to do. Doing every, anything serially will mean that you have uh, the space occupied by the hardware will be small, but it will take a long time to right, because you are reusing the same hardware over and over again. Alright? That is clearly against the complete philosophy of flash converters because in a flash converter you want things quickly. You can't wait for somebody to count the number of ones. Okay? Alright. So, serial ladder is out. What else? Pardon? So, I mean, another way of addition is to use a so called tree structure, right? Where you realize that adding all of them at once is, uh, uh, you know, a horrendously complicated task as far as hardware is concerned. So, what will you do? You will add two at a time and then uh, you will get, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, some numbers. Then you will add those two at a time and then those two at a time. So, this whole thing progresses like a tree, alright. So, that is something also that you could do. But whatever you do, you will end up with a fairly complicated piece if the resolution is, you know, six, I mean, uh, six bits, okay. However, uh, you know, as I said, no idea is too stupid, right. So, there are uh, many situations in which, uh, if you are only doing, uh, say, a, you know, uh, a four bit flash converter, okay, uh, which is useful in many applications also, then that the addition of the ones may not be a bad idea at all, right, because, uh, I mean, the number of levels of the tree uh, now are much more. Does that make sense? Okay. So, uh, the bottom line is there are many, many ways of doing uh, a certain thing, alright. And it is good to kind of not dismiss anything uh, a priori as being uh, silly and so on, because what might be completely inappropriate in one situation might be very, very useful in some other situation. So, uh, you look at everything uh, with an open mind and that is when uh, best solutions come out. Alright. So, now let us get into the, uh, so as you can see, the digital processing is all very straightforward. Alright. Uh, the job we need to actually do carefully is, I mean, what is the only thing that you do not know in this block uh, diagram? The comparator is the only thing that needs to be cracked. Right. So, let us see. what it takes to make a comparator. What is the basic idea? You have, so you, you want to try and build some black box which uh, does this. So, v in, v ref, 
Okay. So if V in is greater than V R, alright, the output is a uh, is a logical one. Okay. So in other words, it must become as high as possible. Uh, if you have supply volt uh, range VDD at zero, the output should be VDD. Otherwise, V out must be zero. Right? Okay. So uh, instead of comparing V in with V out, let's start with a simpler case. Compare V in with zero. Right? If zero is as respectable a reference as any. So uh, let's say you have some input. It's stored somewhere. Right? We know that we're going to sample the input and store it somewhere. So let's say some V in is stored on a capacitor. You want to figure out whether this is greater than zero or less than zero. If it is greater than zero, you want the output of this detector which is doing this job to put out a very very large voltage. In practice, the large voltage will be limited by V. Okay. If it is less than zero, if V is less than zero, you want it to go the output to go as low as possible. In practice, it will be limited to zero. So how might we do this? Okay. For the time being, don't even assume that you. I mean, you have VDD. Let's say you want to go to plus infinity if uh, V is greater than zero, and you go and you want to go to minus infinity if if the input is less than zero. What is uh, uh, one idea that we can think of? Okay, I mean uh, an, uh, an amplifier, right? So idea one is to take the input voltage, all right? Have an amplifier, all right? And uh, clearly, you know that all uh, real amplifiers are finite gain. So if the gain is not sufficient, okay, you put uh, uh, more and more amplifiers. Why do you want more and more gain? I mean, the, I mean, the uh, everybody knows. I mean, uh, no, if the input is way higher than zero, it's it's no big deal, right? If the input is way smaller than zero, also there's no big deal. It's only, I mean, this is really doing a good job only when you know when it's able to resolve inputs which are very very close to the threshold problem, right? So if the input is let's say you know zero plus some very very small value data, then you should still be able to resolve that. Which means that if the input is very very small, then you need to be able to convert it into a large voltage. You need to put a lot of gain. Does it make sense? Correct. Similarly, if the input is just slightly smaller than zero. You want the output to go to a very large negative value, which also means that you need a large Right, and large gain is difficult to obtain in one stage. So one idea is to simply cascade a whole bunch of stages so that you get as large gain as possible. But you know that real amplifiers also have have finite bandwidth, right? So every time, uh, so I mean, you can't expect to put the input in at time t equal to zero and magically the output will settle to its final value right away. It will take a lot of time. Okay, so. If, for example, as in this case, I have uh, three amplifiers, so the gain is AQ. All right. Okay. And in practice, I don't need infinity. If the uh, output voltage is close to VDD, I'm happy because the, any digital logic following this chain of amplifiers will immediately read that as a logical one. Okay. So, what is the minimum resolvable input now? So, okay. all right. And the only way to get the resolution down lower is to make a larger and larger and larger. Now, this is an example of what is called an open loop amplifier, right? 
So it is also possible okay, to use feedback to push the game, I mean to make the, uh, uh, to do what we want, right? Uh, and one way you could think of this is the following, okay? So you look at the voltage on the capacitor Vn. Yeah? If it is greater than 0, then you push it up, alright? If it is less than 0, you pull it down. So what will happen eventually? The basic idea is the following. I have some voltage on a capacitor, right? So if, if the input voltage is greater than 0, right, I will, I will try and, I will try and increase the end. I will push, push some charge on the capacitor in a way as to push V in up. If I inject charge onto the capacitor, the voltage will go up. Alright? So if I do this for a long time, what will happen eventually? Eventually, it will go to plus infinity, right? If there is no limit on the uh, voltage is possible, then the voltage on the capacitor will reach infinity if Vn is greater than 0. On the other hand, if Vn was smaller than 0, alright, what I would do is if Vn was negative, I would keep removing charge from the capacitor, so it would get even more, more, more negative, eventually reach minus 1. Okay? So if you had to implement this idea, what would you do? You, you detect the voltage on the capacitor, right? And you need to increase the voltage of the cap uh, capacitor, what do you need? You need to pump a current into the capacitor, right? So, how will you pump the current? You compare the voltage with zero. Alright, let me not put the sign. Right? You compare the voltage with zero. If the voltage is positive, what do you want to do? You want to push in current. So, this, uh, this is a voltage controlled current source, ok. So, if this voltage is greater than 0, I should push current onto the capacitor. If the voltage is less than 0, I should pull current out of the capacitor. And so, what, uh, what are the signs on the transconductor? If, uh, So let's say uh, this is Vx and the transconductor is defined by G times Vx. Right? So what's uh, which should be the what should be the size of the capacitor on the uh, transconductor? Okay, so this is plus, this is minus. You understand? So if this voltage was initially V1 at T equal to infinity, alright, the voltage on this capacitor Vc will tend to infinity if V1 is greater than 0 and Vc will tend to minus infinity if V1 is less than 0. Okay. In practice, the transconductor will have finite voltage range. So, the moment this voltage starts to go above uh, VDT or below 0, they just simply clamp. Okay? So, we don't have to worry about any of the voltages going, actually going to. Okay? So, but the question is how long will it take to go to infinity? Right? What is the, this is clearly a dynamic system. So, there will be poles and zeros. So, uh, what do you think, uh, if I wanted to write the, the initial condition of the capacitor was V1 and the transconductance was G, how will the uh, output voltage change as a function of time? So, C, this capacitor had a value C, C dV C by dT must be three times We are always used to RC networks where uh, the transconductance, I mean this, uh, this, this right hand side is negative, alright. 
But this is a situation where you want the opposite to happen. Okay? So, which means that Bc of t is b1 e to the t g by c. So, the poles are in the, or the pole, it's a, it's a single pole system. Where is the pole? The pole is in the right half S plane. If the pole is in the right half plane, you know, we know already that uh, this uh, thing is not a stable system. So, eventually it will go into the right. So, that is what we want to anyway. So, if, uh, okay, so, so what do you do now? So, given that you know this, can you now suggest an idea to make, uh, what do you do? I put, uh, you put the V1 that you want resolved on the capacitor and put transparent around the capacitor like this and then do what? Pardon, what would I do? Let it regenerate for how long? Till it reaches VDT, that, that is, I mean, if V1 was 0, it will never reach VDT. See, one idea is to say wait forever, right? So, in which case, you know that even, even uh, within course, infinitesimally small V1 will eventually, you know, if you give it enough time, hopefully the output will go to VDT at some point in time, right? But that's clearly not a practical solution because, you know, you want to resolve this and move on with life, right? You want to resolve the next input. You don't want to keep waiting for this to, uh, to give you an answer. So, what do you do? So, you, you say, I mean, you know that finally I want this to run at a rate of, I want a flash AT converter running at some so many megabits per second, right? So, that basically means that the maximum time I have to, to do this whole operation is certainly less than one time period, right? Because in that time period you have to do sampling, holding, then you have to do all this stuff, then uh, so, the, the Absolute limit on the time you have for this guy to regenerate is 1 over the clock, right? So, if you had a time t, then the voltage of the capacitor at time t is nothing but the initial voltage on the capacitor V1 times e to the t g by c. Okay. So, c by g has got the dimensions of time and this is called the regenerative time constant. You can see that uh, I mean, uh, when compared to the cascade of amplifier solution, uh, can you comment on the merits of this versus the cascade of amplifier solution? So, you can clearly see that the gain here is a function of time, okay? And uh, so, you know, if you wait long enough, you will certainly get a large gain. And not only that, uh, regarding hardware, can you, can you comment on the complexity of this versus uh, a chain of amplifier? I mean, this is a lot more economical of, I mean, finally, you, how do you make an amplifier? You take a voltage BCVS and put it into a resistor, right? That's, the, uh, that's how you learned how to make amplifiers. So, if you want a large number, large number of amplifiers in cascade, it means a large number of voltage control current sources pushing into resistors, okay. Whereas, this is just one volt voltage control current source. So, clearly, this represents a very hardware efficient solution, okay. And not surprisingly, uh, is the de facto thing to do if you want to resolve, okay. So, what is the minimum you can resolve is approximately VDT divided by e to the dg by c. Now, please recall that what we what we have in practice as I kept telling you are fully differential signals. We do not for a whole bunch of reasons if we do not want to operate on single ended signals, we want to be able to 
you want to be able to figure out, I mean, if you want to be able to process all the signals differentially, right? Which means that you are not comparing a single-ended input with a single-ended reference. Rather, what you are doing is comparing a differential input with a differential reference. You understand? So, in other words, what we need to do is if I read it the same discussion with differential signals, I have VCM plus delta V and VCM minus delta V. Let's say these are on setting on two capacitors. Okay. What I want to do is what? Yeah, I just want need to figure out if delta V is positive or negative. Correct? Earlier there was just one input, I want to figure out if it's greater than zero or less than zero. Now, my input is, is not any one voltage, but the difference between these two inputs, right? So, my task now is to figure out if the difference is positive or difference is negative. Okay? And again, you know, we can apply the same line of thought uh, that, we, uh, uh, that we used earlier, which is one thought would be to simply put a whole bunch of amplifiers, put a difference of pair and keep, keep gaining up the difference. And as we discussed earlier, uh, you do, I mean, uh, if you put uh, uh, an amplifier in cascade, the minimum resolvable difference will be of the order of VDT divided by V to the power n. Okay. An alternate idea is to do the following, which is to sense the difference. If the difference is greater than zero, you push current into, into the top capacitor. If the difference is smaller than zero, you pull current from the top capacitor and push current into the bottom one. So eventually, the difference between these two, whatever difference was there initially, will get, keep getting magnified more. So what do I need to do? What did we do earlier? We had a single transconductor. Now we need a differential transconductor. So the transconductor must be capable of sensing the difference between these two inputs okay, and pushing out, let me call this G, so this should be G times, uh, let us say the transconductor is pushing out a current G times uh, delta V and also pulling in a current. G times. What should I do now to these currents? Current them where? Pardon? They should go to the top or to the bottom? Right? So this will ensure that I mean, this is exactly the same thing that we had in the single ended case. Alright, uh, uh, the only thing is not that's all. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, the next thing is yes, uh, we know what to do, but uh, we want to figure out uh, how to do it, right? So we need we need trans two transconductors. I mean, we need a differential transconductor. In other words, we want something which will take two voltages VCM plus delta V and VCM minus delta V and push out currents some G times delta V and pull in a current G times delta V. Okay? And uh, there are any number of ways of generating transconductors. So for every transconductor you can, you can generate, you can, uh, you can uh, create a new latch. Right? This is called a regenerative latch. Alright? Okay? So, uh, with every new transconductor, you can generate a latch by putting it in positive feedback. So, on this one. The simplest thing you can think of, what is, the, what is one of the simplest voltage controlled current sources you can think of? Differential amplifier, anything even cheaper than that? Okay, I mean, uh, so, another, I mean, the simplest thing you can think of is, is the CMOS inverter, properly biased around you know that the CMOS inverter characteristics 
have something like this. Okay. If the CMOS inverter is biased exactly at its trip point, which can be gotten by con connecting the input to the output. This is the inverter characteristic. So, this is V in, this is V out. So, if I plot V in versus V out for a CMOS inverter, I will get this characteristic like this. And there is a region in the characteristic where the gain is very, very high, ok. And that voltage can be figured out by connecting the output to the output to the input in this fashion. In which case it will settle to this voltage. Right? So let me call this V trip. Does that make sense? Okay. So if the inverter is biased around the trip point, okay, then around the trip point if I put in let me call that, uh, let me assume magically that VCM is also, is, is the, the common mode voltage of the two inputs is sitting around the trip point of the inverters. Then if I, if I put in VCM plus delta V, right, what happens to the, uh, the, the, uh, the inverter will tend to draw a current, some GM times delta V, right. The GM can be, how do you figure out what GM is? It is nothing but GM of the P mass plus GM of the N mass. So, and similarly, if I put VCM minus delta V here, this will push out the current here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. So, this here is our So, what should I do now? These are the my two inputs which are on these capacitors and what should I do? I should connect, please note that this represents, if this is VCM plus delta V and this is VCM minus delta V. This current is uh, GM delta V and this current is GM delta V. So, what should I do? I should as per this block diagram, as per this block diagram, I should connect the output of this chap here, alright, and the output of this guy. So, if I redraw it, I mean, if you trace the diagram, you see that it is two inverters in cascade and the output connected back to the input. So, if I took two capacitors charged to VCM plus delta V and VCM minus delta V and hook two inverters back to back like this, what will happen to the voltage of the left capacitor? tend to go, what was higher will tend to keep, will go even more higher, I mean, uh, will go, will increase even more and what was smaller will decrease. Eventually, the CMOS inverters anyway uh, cease to behave like transconductors once the output voltage becomes too high or too low. So, the two outputs will go to either VDD, I mean, if the left guy was larger than the guy on the right, then the left node will eventually go to VDD, the right node will go down. So, this uh, uh, is an example of, this is one example of, of so called latch and as I said 
you put these two capacitors, uh, you put charge on these two capacitors, uh, hang them up in this fashion and you wait for sufficiently long and lo and behold the output will be at digital logic level which is either, I mean it should be either VAD or depending on which of the inputs was large. Does it make sense? Okay. No, oh, but uh, I mean this is just the basic skeleton. We had to put up, uh, you know, uh, we had to put up a whole lot of dressing on this, and uh, you know, before it is, before it is any useful. All right. Okay. Uh, so what are all the problems with this? First of all, if you want to speed up operation, what can you do? What is the only way in which you can speed up operation? Pardon? Raise GM of the inverter. Okay. How will you raise the GM of the inverter? If you increase size, the parasitic capacitance will also increase. So, what I mean? So, to increase this, uh, the speed with which, I mean, the only way to increase the so-called gain of the comparator or to, uh, the only way to reduce the minimum resolvable voltage, okay, is to play with this number. C by G. The regenerative time constant of the word of the uh, system has to be reduced by, I mean, to an extent, uh, I mean, I uh, will make it, you basically want to make it as small as possible. Okay. So, and, and uh, what is C? It is these two capacitors. I mean, C is this capacitor. Not only that, the inverter has got a whole bunch of Parasitics which you cannot get rid of because they are inherent to the intrinsic to transistor operation. Alright? So, the true capacitance, the true regenerative constant in this case is not C by G but C plus Cp1 plus Cp2 by G. Okay, this is the real. Delta V and DCM minus delta V. 
I need to get that onto those two voltages onto the left and right nodes. All right. So what should I do? I mean, can I simply connect this to VCM minus uh, plus delta V and VCM minus delta V? Earlier we said, okay. Earlier we said if the voltages were on those parasitic capacitors, there, I mean, on the capacitors there, then this uh, this will regenerate and we are all happy, right? The question now is, how do we get the voltages onto those capacitors in the first place? Okay. One idea is, okay, just I mean, you want voltage on those capacitors, I will connect the voltage VCM plus delta V on the left node and VCM minus delta V on the right node. Does this work? Clearly, there's nothing will happen because we are holding those nodes at constant potentials that those potentials are, are going over. Okay. So, what should you do? You should momentarily charge those two capacitors with the with whatever voltage you want, and then then let the inverter, the cascade, the uh, whatever the loop of inverters do its thing, right? So, uh, so uh, any suggestion of what I should do? If you want to connect something to something for some time and then open, what what kind of element you need? You need a switch. So this is VCM plus delta V. This is VCM minus delta. Okay. So let me say I connect this to those two voltages which I need to be resolved. All right. I need to figure out whether delta V is positive or negative. Have these two voltages. So during a phase phi one, I connect them on to this regenerative pair. All right. Then I should open the switches. Okay. And then the inverters will do their thing. Right. And uh, what is uh, high will go higher, and uh, what is low will go low. Okay. This is still a problem. What is the problem? Think of what happens when right, clearly when phi one is open, there is no problem at all because this still remains the remains our original. Uh, regenerative pair, there's, there's no issue with that. Think of what happens when phi 1 is on. Okay, so, so I mean, uh, some voltage sources are trying to drive. I think I'll stop here.